lovers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're already into blue for real. <laughs> we haven't even started. I don't know, since I was like six or seven, I drew all the time. Like my mom and dad really encouraged me to do art. They're very supportive. I am a creative soul. I have never had really a nine to five job. I've always done what I've loved and been passionate about. Whether that's art on whatever scale, I did music for quite some time. And in between touring, I would always do little illustrations here and there, commission pieces for people. And like the pure joy I'd get out of doing that I get lost in drawing. I could be there for like six to eight hours, probably longer, just drawing. I'm, a, I'm more of a portrait artist. I think that's where my strengths lie. I love trying to bring out the character and life in someone. Growing up, creativity was something to be proud about. It was encouraged. I didn't get accepted to NCAD, <laughs> is my difference. Um, twice I applied and I didn't get it. And I think at the time it was a bit soul destroying because I was convinced, like, I'm creative. I'm like everyone said I was. Why am I able to get into art college? But I just didn't possess the kind of attributes that were probably needed for art. I ended up going to design college. I ended up studying three-dimensional design. I suppose it's also part of what I bring to Jill and Jill is I love the bigger picture, whereas Jill's so good at the detail. Having to challenge myself to draw in a different way as well for the boss ladies and Jill's educated me that on, on that, you know, and how to draw differently for illustrations to go onto fabric. So it's, you're still pushing yourself. You're still trying to impress and push your skill set as best you can. All right, all right. I think it's really interesting when it comes to a brand or a band's name or anything, it's, is the music good or is the product good or is it, is a brand, it's brand awareness. So really what you call it at the end of the day, it's really what's in it is the exciting part. And the, it does help though that it's called Chill and Chill. Makes it easy to remember. <laughs> it was always just two artists or two designers working together. It was never this mentality of like, we're gonna have a brand, we're gonna have a, you know, a clothing line, we're gonna collaborate with other Irish brands, global brands. It was literally just this collaboration was two individuals working together. When the pandemic hit, like, listen, we're, we're just speaking on us and how it affected us. Like, you know, we won't even get into the grand scheme of, of how horrible it all is. It's like stepping into the fear zone again. Like, you, we could have easily have just run away. It was around this time, it was March last year, you know, when things started to close down. I just remember that moment of getting so much fear and worry about what was next, but then actually realizing how much we were gonna lose if we didn't act. We focused on the only line of communication we had, which was online and that was like social media. So with our customers and following. The mentality of turning our attention to social media to talk yeah. to our customer, yeah. we've never done that before. Yeah. You know, and it actually, we realized that we actually are quite approachable and we love the interaction with our customers. And, and all those things even fed back into that brand awareness and staying relevant and topical and positive. You know what I mean? As a brand, we our outlook is positive. So it was communicating that to our customers in the simple way, which was literally bring a bit of colour into your life. I think the pandemic has made us just re really reevaluate the whole business. We've learned a hell of a lot from it. I think the 
beauty of Kilkenny is that they're a family business. They love that kind of, you know, relationship with their stockists. They want to know what's going on. Like, um, They're you know. always invested in the journey and the story yeah. of the brand. It was back in 2019, Crafts Council put us forward for scale, mm -hmm. which is a pop-up incentive as part of Kilkenny Group on Nassau Street. And we got to have a few weeks in there, feeling our way. Yeah, it's a totally different demographic. So we didn't really know like if we would fit in. I think it was a bit of a gamble probably for Kilkenny as well. We were all surprised, Kilkenny yeah. and ourselves, of how well it was received. But it also kind of, it was our step into the Champion Green incentive. Yeah. The Champion Green, obviously we were getting introduced to it in 2019, being part of Kilkenny but I'd say it really elevated tenfold when the pandemic yeah. hit because it became even more relevant and more, like it's just so important because our economy had like just turned to nothing really. It was a really good, I know, call to action for the public. Support yeah. local, support those small businesses. This message that Champion Green are trying to make is really important and we're, we're in it now and the amount that we have gained from their community, their knowledge, yeah. and it led to a phone call. They partnered up with Aviva and their portfolio and we were asked would we look at a, a, some some premises down on Dawson Street which they own in Hibernian Way and again it's just it's how we work as well we'll just say yes and we'll figure it out afterwards <laughs> phone calls were happening back and forth um, and well they finally came back to us and said no actually sorry you're, you're, you're gonna have number five since team is green it, it did feel like from that moment on until we actually got the keys there wasn't really time to Stop process. and process it either. We had also just come out of lockdown as well, so time was against us. But having it completely backed by Aviva and then also even having that relationship to build on as yeah. well was just a whole other game changer for us. Something we'd never even envisioned, as Jill said, the retail lotto. You just can only imagine it. Yeah. Yeah, we had to roll up our sleeves and, and get in, mm -hmm. and we didn't have the luxury of kind of calling on all our friends and family to come in and give us a dig out. So it was, you know, get in, get painting, hammer nails, put a wall up. Um, get a lot of looks off a couple of delivery drivers, <laughs> dropping off some pallets of, you know, sheet material. Being like, you girls gonna, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. gonna put these walls up, yeah. you know, and then just kind of getting a little dig out where we could. Um, but, you know, we had some amazing other small businesses around us that helped us with kidding out, you know, vinyl graphics, you know, making them look like Jill and Jill vinyls. Uh, we did an amazing, we have an incredible front of house and which everything that was created as well can be removed from yes. the shop. And that was key. You know, we might've had a six month lease, but you know, we weren't there forever and there's potential for that whole fit out now to go somewhere else, which is also, you know, it, it's part of doing a pop-up. Yeah. We're not there when people go onto our Instagram accounts. We don't see whether they love it or hate it. Yeah. <laughs> but having the bricks and mortar and having somebody walk into the shop or by the window and seeing their expression, it really cemented that not only were we doing something right, but all the things that we've been building on about living in color and positivity and the kind of fun side of our brand. It, it we were just, yeah, we were doing something right. And it was, it was coming through because we were hearing it from the yeah. customer. And also visually seeing it for ourselves, being able to curate a space and seeing the artwork sit with the clothing, just, I kind of, it's kind of like a pride moment, isn't it? When you see yeah. it all come together, you're like, oh, they actually, they do work in unison. Yeah. I think for so long we were considering them as separate entities. Yeah. And I think up until now, it's all one, you know. Yeah. You know. I think going into having a bricks and mortar store, our total perception of the whole thing has changed. It needs to be a 50-50 balance. There's, there's such huge potential in this bricks and clicks kind of mentality. 
yeah, for the online and the physical to somewhat pair. The physical store is when you're kind of jumping into the online. So you're getting the more tactile, the colors are vi more vibrant. Mm -hmm. So it is a, an extended version of what your online needs to be or is. We've seen the potential in it, but we also see the potential in having maybe that, I don't know, the flagship store. Like we'd love to be still doing pop-ups. Oh yeah, the dream would be to pop up here and there, whether it be LA or Berlin, but you know, home base headquarters, this shop will be, in our dream scenario, would be just Ireland and just having one headquarters there. Yeah, I think that was always, a, it was always that kind of dream scenario. It's definitely kind of tipped over into, we could put the, the things in motion for this to happen. And the potential of a building like number five, St. Stephen's Green, like, Aviva has some incredible, beautiful buildings, and to be able to fit into one of them, mm -hmm. it just, like, it, before it even happened, it seemed impossible, and now, have, having lived it, it's very possible. Yeah. The one question, obviously, you know, that you have to ask yourself is, you know, is this financially possible as well? And I think when you take us, when we've taken a step back now after doing the six months there, and we look at the last six months of cash flow, we have the confidence to kind of to take on it. I suppose a more permanent version of that in in the in the plan for the business going forward. Whereas we would have never considered that. We were always a brand that considered the fringes of Dublin as where we popped up not the high street and that mentality alone is worth so much to the business. In Q2 we were only operating online, retail was closed, lockdown was heavy and we had to focus on selling stock we already had. In Q3 our sales went up when we opened the shop in early September by about 50%. Returning customer rate increased about 50% and the average order value increased by 60%. In Q4, we could see the growth in the last three months of the year. We only had the store open for six weeks, but between online and click and collect, our sales grew by 160%. This is versus that previous quarter, but we also saw the growth in a new customer, and I think that was around 75%. With Aviva backing us, and there actually only being two of us in the business, we had space to focus on marketing the pop-up, growing that brand awareness, and this all contributed to that growth in sales. Yeah, and to even see that growth was quite remarkable to us. So if we were open to like a full world, the world, <laughs> what, what, you know, it really does give you that confidence. And it, so for Aviva and Champion Green to kind of give us that safety net and that platform to be able to do this for six months, it's a price tag you can't really put on it. So they were backing us not only just with the property but in terms of the press and the kind of exposure that we got from it. You know, we had RTE involved. We had uh, interviews with the Sunday Business Post, uh, mm -hmm. Irish Times. You know, our product was being taken up in nearly all the fashion magazines, uh, you know, in the weekend supplements and things like that. So like, there was a constant relevancy around us and the store, even though we weren't even open at certain times. Without Aviva going that little bit further, and helping the Champion Green Incentive, we, you know, it was a, we could see a direct result of it. Yeah, and you know, from the, the six months being there, we were able to kind of gather a lot of information. So we were able to communicate all this back to Aviva, which was really important asset for them to have, to understand the, the use of their buildings or who they want to have in their buildings, the potential of an idea that, you know, of it not just being a nine to five retail shop, if it could turn into something after hours, you know, as in a little small gig or another artist could maybe share gallery space wall and have an exhibition. It just becomes more of a cultural space than it being just a one, yeah. one trick pony <laughs> or two headed <laughs> unicorn instead. <laughs> you know, they were really open to hearing all this, which yeah. was amazing, you know, and if our, experience there has changed any way of how that building or multiple buildings can be used for retail and expose you know Grafton Street or Stevens Green to be this multiple culture night every day rather than one day mm -hmm. a year then that's brilliant. Mm -hmm.